Welcome back to another episode of More BS. I'm Chef Babette. I'm Shabnam Islam, and today we have an incredibly Yay! special guest joining us, the infamous Chef Chris Tucker. There you go. Chris. What's up, Chris? What's up? Louder for people in the back. What's up? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and so for those of you guys that don't know Chris, we had the opportunity of meeting him on Peeled. Yep. There so Chris, how did you get involved with Peeled? And Peeled was the first ever fully vegan cooking competition show. And Chris was one of our famous judges. So how did you get involved? Yeah. So they, um, it was interesting because they reached out to me first to be um, a contestant on the show. Oh no. This is, this is some like never behind, never before told behind the scenes um, like BS right here. So they reached out to me to actually be a contestant on the show. And I was like, um, no, I, I can't, I can't be a contestant, but have you guys filled like, and, and I'll, I'll preface this with saying like, I get, I get contacted all the time to be like a contestant on a food, you know, a food food game show or food this show, and I'm like, no, that's not, that's not the course that I'm looking for in my career. So I'll, you know, respectfully decline and let them know to keep me in mind for other stuff. And that's kind of what happened with Peel. Like, they contacted me and they asked, like, hey, are you interested in in um, being a what are the the competitors? And I'm like. Um, no, but have you guys filled all of your, all of your, um, uh, all of your roles for your judging panel? Because that's really what I'm looking to do. And I think it's kind of, it's kind of a good thing for people to, um, to learn from because when you know, like where you want to go in your career, it's important for you to take control of that. So if you're constantly getting, um, you know, requests from people to, to do things that aren't necessarily what you want to do and what you see for the trajectory of your career it doesn't mean you have to accept them you can turn those opportunities into what you want and that's kind of what i did with peel i said no but i would love to do something else with the show if you have it available and that's exactly what happened so um nice. yeah i kind of just made the opportunity myself to be i honest. i i love that story so that much that's a good story that's a good story and, and you made a great judge yeah you did make a great judge but you know for those of you that don't know that chris actually did get a start being talent on the great american baking show correct is that what it's yeah. called okay and so he's not saying he hasn't done it before but now after doing that you just kind of you want a little bit more out of your life well it's very easy once you go onto a food competition show be it the bake-off be it hell's kitchen be it this or that it's very easy to get trapped in that bubble of being a contestant on cooking shows. Mm. You, if you turn on, like, let's say the Food Network, you will see the same exact contestants on every cook, cake show, every cupcake series, um, every holiday mm. wars. They have some very, very repeat um, people, and it's, it's easy to get pulled into that. And I knew that after I did the Bake Off, I didn't want to just be one of those, like, people that looked like they were trying to reach fame and success however they could by being you know, just just this the same old wash rinse repeat of, of a contestant on a game show and for some people that's great it just wasn't what i saw for for my trajectory love it and i think wash rinse repeat is really far from who you are in general as a person right and for those of you that haven't seen it yet chris and babette just shot some amazing content about food and chris just really wowed us oh like, did, didn't me the things that you can do with tofu is insane yes yeah, it's, it's insane and, and, and i've been eating tofu forever <laughs> and ever and ever and this kid comes up and he's like oh, i gotta do this with tofu i gotta do this with the tofu i went back home and pulled and went in my library and got Got my tofu book out. oh you did see you even see he inspires yes. even the vegan chefs to do something different <laughs> um which i love that about you and so for those of you that don't know cooking was not chris's first thing it's not his first rodeo much like babette he has had a trajectory of trying different things <laughs> and we um, were both hairstylists yeah so let's talk about that how did you actually come to be <laughs> chef chris tucker yeah so you know it's funny i always 
I grew up in like the restaurant world, right? My family owned a restaurant. I'm from Florida. My grandparents owned a restaurant in North Georgia. And so whenever wow. we were on school holiday or, you know, extended summer breaks, we would go up to our, our family's restaurant in Georgia. And that's kind of where we spent all of that free time. And so I really was surrounded by all of this culinary creativeness from a really young age. We actually moved to Georgia for a brief moment when I was really young and um, we lived there to help my grandparents run the restaurant. And so it was something that I was immersed in from, you know, a really, really young, young age of life. And, and I just, I was always interested in food. It was always something that was really a passion of mine, but I never thought of it as a career. So after I graduated high school, you know, I dipped around a lot in Florida still with where I lived. And then finally I said, you know what? I got to do something with my life. I knew that I didn't want to go to college right out of high school because I wasn't like a school person. And um, at a certain point I was like, okay, I got to do something. So I moved out to LA and I moved here to go to hair school. So I did hair for like eight years and I turned around one day and I'm like, this is not fulfilling to me at all. Like, I don't like doing hair. I don't like, like, I don't like the way my body feels after a long day of doing hair. And that was the biggest thing for me. I just felt like shit at the end of the day because of what it does to your body. And why are you laughing? I'm talked about that. She, Babette is laughing and I want to know yes. why this is resonating with no, her. No, because I so feel exactly where he's coming from. I, I totally do. I totally do. It's yeah. funny. I felt the same yeah, exact way. <laughs> It's a hard career. Like people don't realize what a hard career the hair industry is on somebody's body, on somebody's like mental well-being. You have clients coming into your chair and pouring out all of their bullshit all day on you, and you're kind of like their therapist, and and you're cutting their hair and your body hurts, and you know then you have to go home and deal with your own life. So <laughs> sounds like a personal <laughs> trainer. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and you're not getting paid to be their therapist either. So, true, true. Um, at a certain point, I was just like, I gotta do something different. And I got the opportunity to go on the Bake Off. And once I came back from doing the Bake Off, I was like, you know what, I can't go back to doing hair. And so I transitioned all of those clients who were my hair clients into catering clients. I started doing their <laughs> that birthdays. That's amazing. That is doing, so cute. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it's kind of like you already have a, a clientele base there, right? And so how can I, mm. I created that, I pulled them in, they're there, they're there because of me, so how can I keep them and utilize them in some way that's still going to make an income and, and provide a profit? But wait, how the job. hell did that. you get yourself on the Great American Bake Off without being a baker previously? Like. Well, I was always a baker, so okay. that was kind of where, like, I, that was really, like, my focus back in the day. Like, my, one of my grandmas, she was an avid baker, and she would, she would teach me um, all the things. I was, like, the only grandchild that, that was interested in getting in the kitchen with her. And so, my one set of grandparents had the restaurant, they were teaching me all the savory stuff, and then my other grandma, he was getting she it was the, the sweets person, and she was teaching me everything that is so on the cool. sweet side. I love that. Because, I love that. I mean, you bring so much. I love that he's saying this because he's bringing so much of his culture and his yes. history. And when we were on Peeled, we always had to, we called him vegan chef Chris Tucker, Southern baker with a twist. And I really want to tap into that with you because I think a lot of people who advocate against veganism are so stuck on the fact, well, this is my culture. This is the way that I eat. Right. This is the way that I've been. And so you come from a background of different things. You're from the South. You're gay, mm -hmm. you're male. Like, these are some things that have not always worked for you. Um, so how, what message do you have for people at home saying, you know, this is my culture, this is what I do? Yeah, you know, I, I think it doesn't matter where you come from or what you do, but you can, you can make anything vegan. Like, anything can become vegan. And I think that's the important thing. That is thing, the important is, is thing. Once you resonate with <laughs> veganism and... Once that, once it takes hold of you in your brain, in your heart, that this is something, this is a lifestyle that you want to, you know, transcend into and really become a part of, the food's kind of the afterthought and it just kind of all comes together and makes sense. 
Um, but so you can create anything from a traditional cuisine in a vegan way, like fried chicken, you can do vegan, you can do Indian food, you can do um, Thai food, you can do Caribbean food, any type of cuisine that you want to eat, you can do it, but you can do it cruelty free. I love it. So true. So true. You are spot on, Mr. Chris. So what do you recommend to our viewers like on how to get started? Because I think a lot of people are inspired. They're inspired by Babette. They're inspired by you. And they're like, yeah, but I can't, I can't make what Chris makes. But I can't make what Babette makes. Let me tell you what's funny, Chris. When we did the mayo thing, they knew not to ask me shit. <laughs> The only person they ask questions to is Chris. Chris. Is it good? They're like, she don't post nothing but some workout videos. I don't even know if she know how to make this herself. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true though. No, but but really and truly, I I I feel the same exact way as, as you with with all of that. Every from whence I came to where I am now. But I want you to teach me some of those baking desserts, like. I got into the raw cashews and you know I can I can make anything out of a raw a raw cashew. But the baking desserts, like those chocolate bars oh with that god. strawberry stuff on the end. What oh was god. that? Oh my god. I, I don't want know. that. I want to know how to make that, Chris. I I think we should have a class. Oh my god. How many of you at home would actually watch a class with Chris Babette? I'm there to eat, so I'll be Not, there. Well, I'm gonna be eating. Chef but is gonna be there. Will learning. you? Will you watch? You're gonna you be do, in class with me. We need you to comment, subscribe, comment below what you yes. would like to see Chris and Babette cook right. in the kitchen because no, we would you like got to, to make... see what Chef Babette is gonna learn from Chris in the kitchen. And I'm talking about baking right now, primarily true, true. baking. But I think you could show a raw dessert, and he could do a baked dessert. I don't need to show a raw dessert. She does. We just... She does. She does. She does. <laughs> I think oh, okay, I'll tell you what. Okay. I'll do a raw dessert to match his cooked dessert. Like that chocolate thing you do, I'll do a raw one like that. I think that would be great yeah. to show. Like, have you ever done like a raw apple pie? There you go. Oh, yeah. Really? I do all that. I can do all that kind of stuff. No, but I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, you can't bake like no, that. No, I can't bake like him. Nobody no, can bake like that. No, him. come on. <laughs> my, little, my little bun cakes I make at work, I got one <laughs> recipe. I make every flavor bun cake out of that one recipe. All I do. <coughs> but that thing was. But that's the thing. That's the thing, too. It's like you really only need to have. It's true. That one good recipe. It's true. And then you can. to that base flavor. Right. And you can. You can really play with that. No, but you did something special with that chocolate cake. You know, a ain't no need of me lying, Chris. It was something. Else. I agree was, because <laughs> yeah. I, I, to be honest, that was some bakery, a lot of the vegan bakery, stuff yeah. that I've eaten, and I think it turns people off, is because it's so dry. Like it doesn't have the texture, the moisture that you think you would get if you have eggs and dairy. No, his just but tasted like a cake. Just it was like insane. a regular. But you told me that the trick was not actually. It, it was like oil right if there's too much or too little it, it impedes see he knows that i do not well, let, let me tell him you. tell people but, but about what it. i'm saying when i'm pouring my oil chris i count one two three four five. don't count no look one two three four five six oh that's enough don't do that don't do that <laughs> no it worked but it works for <laughs> my little cake see and so what i do is every now and then i pour one two three four five six in a measuring cup and then i can tell you exactly how much oil that is but I'm just horrible with measuring and all that stuff because I'm I'm not really a chef. He's a chef. I'm not I'm not no. No, you're a chef. No, no. I own a restaurant, y'all, and I got a menu, and I know how to make that shit on point every day. But don't ask me to do a whole bunch of old weird shit like he be doing. Like that mayonnaise that day, I was like. Uh, yeah, I still use stove all mayonnaise <laughs> while I was talking mess. I want to go back to the dryness, though, like, because I think that's a big thing. Like, for those people that are like, okay, I'm going to play with making, like, a, my favorite ve my favorite cake. I'm going to veganize it. How do we ensure that it stays moist? Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is you can, you, you have to swap out your eggs, right? So your eggs are going, the first thing somebody's going to do when they look at a recipe and they're and they're like, I want to veganize this. They're going to look at their eggs and be like, oh my God, I don't know what to do, 
So your eggs are the biggest thing that you want to replace. You can replace eggs a million different ways. You can do flaxseed, you can do chia seed, you can do banana, you can do applesauce, you can do what I do the most of, and I know Babette does this as well with like her cornbread and such, is baking soda and um, an acid, which typically you can use just apple cider vinegar. Um, but you can also use like a natural acid like lemon juice. And those two things react in the recipe and give the, um, they give the rise to the cake just like an egg would. But the other thing an egg does is it provides moisture to a recipe. And so you have to say, okay, well, where am I going to get that extra moisture from as well? And that comes from um, the addition of some added fat or some added um, some added liquid of sorts. And so when you're making like a full egg replacement, you're going to do like um, a tablespoon of oil. You're going to do a tea, I'm sorry, a teaspoon of oil, a tablespoon of acid, and then a teaspoon of, uh, a half a teaspoon of baking soda. And that's going to pretty much act as your egg replacer. And this is not a tried and true across the board, you know, going to work for every single recipe. It's really about experimenting because you can always add too much oil and it's gonna make the cake dry. Right. So Shabnam, they, they had a cake of mine when I was testing this recipe that they are all you know just going crazy about. They had the same recipe a week prior and it was a lot drier. And that's because that recipe had a lot more oil in it. But she's still eating. But she liked it. Yeah, and you think like, oh, it has more fat in it. It should be moisture. Right, right. Not, yeah. And it's that's just, just not, not how, how it, it works, um, huh? It's just not how, how oh. it works. So the thing, I don't make a bunch of don't cakes. Ever bake, don't bake like the best bake. No. Because <laughs> you, you can't bake by counting. You have to do <laughs> scale. And this is, this, this is one of the biggest problems that we have in the States, is that we bake by... Um, we bake by cup measurement. Yes. And when you bake by a cup measurement and you're reading a recipe and they can say like a cup of flour, that cup of flour can be measured 500 different ways. You can scoop the cup of flour out of the bag. You can measure into a cup. You can, so you can like scoop the flour out of the bag and then measure into your cup measure and it's gonna all come out different. And so oh. to weigh the actual ingredients on a scale, which is very easy, and it's also a lot less cleanup because you measure into one bowl, um, it's, it's just a game changer and it makes everything come out like a bakery every time. You know what? Wow. This, is, this is really what a good Chris, tip. Chris, really, when are we gonna do this? Because I need that. Re really and truly, I make, look, I ain't gonna even yeah. I ain't gonna even burden y'all with the mess I'm making. <laughs> but guess what? People like my little bunts. Yeah. They do. But yeah. Chris, we need to do this seriously. We need to have a class. Yeah. Put I mean, me in it. It's like you've been making your buns from your soul for a long time. And so you know how what it feels like right. to make those. And it's just like a repetitious thing. Right. But for somebody out there who's like, I wanna make, you know, I want to make Chef the best buns. They can't just start going and pouring things. That's why I they never tried to, to tell anybody because yeah. I knew they'd be jacked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't share that recipe with anybody. <laughs> I don't. I, you, yeah. know, you know, what I love that Chris said is that you, you make buns from your soul. I do. And for those of you that have, I hope you get to try his food because he truly makes food from his soul. And the one thing I've noticed about you, Chris, is that when you cook, you don't get tired like you really actually enjoy the act of and cooking. And he's so, and he's so confident. fast and so confident and just so good. Like it's so exquisite, so like so measured. Work. Like did, 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 seven meals done and of all different types of things, and it's just so well done. That's why we need to do this. You Definitely. know, I, 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 I'm what excited. Do you, do you do you experience burnout? Like, I feel like I do. I've I never mean, seen that There's on you. definitely times where I'm like, I just can't cook tonight because I might be, you know, filming all day or working with, working on stuff for a client all day, like just thinking about a menu and out shopping and prepping for a client stuff that I have going on the next day. And I'll just be like, I can't make dinner tonight. Um, we got to order in. But there's very few and far 
between times that it's like that. I mean, nine times out of 10, I'm like, okay, what are we going to have for dinner tonight? And I, I, it'll be, it's still like, I'm still excited to get in the kitchen and experiment with, you know, the flavor. So I don't get burned out that much, but I, it, it happens. I think it happens just, it's a natural, like, you know, your brain gets tired no matter what you do and if you love it. So what do you have to say for people back home who like burn out before they even start? I know, huh? You know, like, yeah. how can you- If you have burnout before you start, you need to figure out what your passion is. Exactly. You need to figure out like, That's why, why are you doing what you're doing right. if you're burned out before you're even getting going? Yeah, right. Because there's not, there's, you know, we live in a world that's just constantly moving. Yeah. We're constantly, we're constantly stimulated by our phones, by the news, by what's going on around us. And so to not be able to enjoy the thing that, you know, makes, makes us money, it's, it's really unfortunate. And I know that we're all not fortunate enough to be able to do what we actually love for a living, but if you can get as close to it as possible, that's ideal. And if you're going to work every day and you're burned out, know that you don't have to do that. Like start trying to figure out what the pieces are to get you out of that situation and get you into something that's going to be more fulfilling. And for me, like it was, it was doing hair clients during the day and still, you know, going and catering, mm. uh, you know, he somebody's dinner at night. So, it, so was, it was a transition off of one career into the next yeah, while lot. simultaneously doing both. Whew. That's a lot. Well, that's, that's a, lot. a lot. So um, where can our viewers find you? Where the, can they learn more about you? How can they hire you for some <laughs> private <laughs> chefing? Can they get some recipes from you? Tell them. <laughs> yeah, so you can find me at Vegan Chef Chris Tucker on um, Instagram, and I share occasional recipes. Like I like to do little videos with the bat shop, and you know we we share little recipes from time to time. I like to say that my platform is a lot more about like just inspiring people, and so I'll share recipes from you know I'll I'll share videos rather of like maybe dinners that I'm making or, you know, client stuff that I'm doing, but I'm not, I'm not going to share every recipe of every single video just because we got to keep some things around for the cookbook, but I do try to share like little helpful, um, little helpful recipes that are going to be like really cost effective. So it's going to be stuff that's made with soy, uh, in terms of like textured vegetable protein or, uh, tofu. And I like to just make stuff that's going to be accessible to everyone and not, not use a bunch of like uh, products that you have to go and purchase from the store that are, you that's know, nice. over $10 because that's nice. they're vegan. Keep it so. simple, stupid. And I love that you say that because you talk mm. about making veganism accessible right. and cost effective. And for those of you that are always arguing, right. um, oh, being vegan is expensive. It's expensive, right. Uh, Chris can create, I mean, how cheap can you create an entire week's worth menu? Like how much do you think you could spend to make sure that you have meals every day of the week? Oh, I mean, $50. Y'all spell that on, y'all, you spend that on coffee. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, I would say $50. I would say for seven, $75 to $100 a week, you could feed a family of four vegan meals yeah, breakfast, I agree. lunch, and dinner. I agree a family of four, I not agree. just a mouth of one. A family of yeah. four. And you're getting all of your vital nutrients, your vitamins, your protein, carbs, fats. Uh, and really it's really balance. weird, too, because some of those items you you repeat use in oh. all of your dishes. So you, it's not like you have to go out and just buy tons of different stuff. Because, I mean, come on. You've been to stuff I eat. We use rice, beans, tofu. And rice, we beans, make all yeah. kinds of stuff. So those are her top three. What would you say your your top five staples are for, for cooking for the week? I would say textured vegetable protein is one. And for those of you that don't know what that is, it's a basically like a, a different form of tofu, but it's a shelf-stable product that you can keep in your pantry. And you can buy it on Amazon for like, I would say 
$20 and under, but the $20 bag is massive and will last you months. You're wow. taking like, it tastes like meat. half a cup out at a time. It tastes like and meat. It tastes like flesh. Let's say it again. It, it tastes, tastes like, like flesh. Meat. It tastes like Animal. meat. Yeah, so it tastes like whatever you want it to taste like. It comes out like it, it's crispy because it's dried, and mm -hmm. then you soak it, and it rehydrates, and then you squeeze the water out of it, and you can make tacos out of it. You can put it in soup, oh, and it gives you the texture. Chili, of like the whole nine yards. Soup. Spaghetti. You can, put it in sauce. you can do literally what, whatever. Like wherever you would usually use a ground meat, you can use textured vegetable protein. So that would be one. I would say two would be, um, two would definitely be tofu. Three would be some type of whole grain or like gluten-free noodle. Like I love the bonza pasta um, because it's, it's chickpea and it's, it's gluten-free. So there's a ton of like protein and just different vitamins in there. Um, four would be fresh herbs and five would be fresh, fresh fruits and vegetables. Wow. It's really that simple. It's that simple. It really is. And I think we do a lot of things to complicate veganism. Um, but if you really strip it down, and when you're thinking about cooking vegan, don't change anything that you already know about cooking. Just take the meat out and replace it with something that is cruelty free. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, oh, tonight I'm going to make uh, chicken parmesan, great. Still make chicken parmesan, but instead of the chicken, we're going to use some pressed tofu instead. You're still going to bread it. You're still going to fry it just like you normally would your chicken parmesan, but we're just going to use some alternatives. And I think that's a really easy way to approach cooking vegan is to start thinking about it like a challenge. Like, oh, how am I going to make this like with no animal products in it? And it starts to become more of like, it starts to become more of a challenge for you in the kitchen instead of something that you're dreading. I agree. Wow. I mean, he just gave y'all the whole gambit I in 20 agree. minutes. I don't know. This was a gift from God, I'm telling you. <laughs> um, and for those of you at home, we thank you so much for watching. Please comment below on what recipes you would like to see Chris and Babette veganize because that is what's going to be coming up next. Thank you, Chris, so much for joining us Thank today. You. We love you so much. Thanks and, for having me. And for those of you that are not following Vegan Chef Chris Tucker, please make sure to do so on Instagram, and we'll see you next time. Bye.